Hello and welcome everybody to ALC at Home. This is our online service here at Abundant Life Church. We're excited today yes, to we are. go through the message, um, get, get inspired and encouraged. Mm. And we love to give online service for all those who can't make it, but for people all over the world, all over the place that want to be mm. encouraged and strengthened. So yeah. we're going to get into it today. It's an exciting time. But firstly, my name's Lewis and this is Hannah yes. and we're part of the team here. Yes, it's so good to be back with you all once again for our online service we hope you've been doing well why don't you drop in the comments below what you've been um feeling and receiving from the sermons over the weeks and if you're wondering how you can check them out they're always up there previous sundays previous slider question videos are always up on our youtube channel so you can go to our channel and check those out we love to hear from you we love your feedback um, and if you do have any questions or any comments or questions or feedback to do with our services you can email them back to info at alc.org.nz and um Anyone from our team will get in contact with you and see how we can help you if you do have anything to do with our online services. But we do have a few notices today as we head into another great week of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. What are our notices for today, Lewis? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great reminder. So we're currently in 21 days mm. of prayer and fasting today. Yeah. Well, the Sunday. As this video is released, is day seven. Yes. Seven. Yeah, so we are one weekend, mm. um, which is amazing. And it's just, you know, we love this time and we encourage you. The main thing is having a time focused as mm. we go into this sort of spring here in Wellington of focusing on, on prayer, of coming together and drawing closer to God. Mm. What does He want to say to us? What does He want to say to this generation? And what are some things we're passionate about that we yeah. want to pray into? And so yeah. I encourage you, let's draw closer to Him, let's listen to Him and let's pray together and I encourage you if there's anything you'd love us to pray with you on just email us at prayeralc.org.nz and we would love to pray with you and some of our team will pray with you as well so I encourage you to do so quickly yes. another thing from me is as we mentioned in the last few weeks Pastor Hamish has moved into his new house mm. and so um, he has officially set up nice. his studio yes. to record Slido. So my encouragement for you is over the next few weeks, look, watch our YouTube channel, keep an eye out on Wednesdays and Sundays because shortly there will be the f first new mm. Q&A ready mm. to go. But also on that, we need questions. Yes. So if you have any questions of anything at all, life, faith, or anything that's on your heart or people have talked to over the last few months, put them all on Slido. Go to mm. slido.com with the hashtag ALC23. Ask away. Yes. And they'll be answered over the next few weeks. So I encourage you to do that. Yes, so so good. I'm very much looking forward to it being back, as I'm sure you are as well. But also here online, if you want to figure anything else out to do with ALC, if you have, um, you want to know where our social media pages are, if you want to look back at notes from our previous sermons, or if you're here in Wellington, you want to find out more about the events that happen here at ALC, we have one platform where you can find all of that information on, and that is Linktree. Linktree is a platform we use to keep you up to date with everything that is happening here at ALC. So to go onto that, uh, you can open up your internet, uh, Explorer, Safari, whatever you use, and you can go on to linktr.ee forward slash ALCNZ, as it says on the screen, and there you will get all the links that you need to find out more to do with ALC. But here online, we also like to talk about giving. Uh, giving is something that we do here in person at our live services. And it's just a great reminder that we get to give back so freely to a God that gave so freely to us. So why don't you pray and reflect. And uh, if you're part of ALC, if you call us home, then the giving number is in the description below. Or if you are living overseas and still want to give, then you can choose a Christian organization of your choice and give to them. But the main way that we encourage you to give is through giving hope. Uh, you know, as we go through the rest of the year and as we go through life um, in different areas, I think it's amazing that we can be representations of Jesus here on earth. Um, so look for someone that you can give hope to, maybe your neighbor, maybe your work colleague, whatever it may look like and choose um, to be the light in the darkness. But I believe we're heading into a time of worship, Lewis. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get into the message today, we're going to go into a time of worship. And we love to do that in so many different ways. Worship isn't just singing songs. Mm. I encourage you to do that. Find yes. a good Spotify playlist or message us. We can help you find one or create one with you. And uh, I encourage you to do that. But also, 
Um, one way we were going to do, going to do it now is just go into a time of listening to scripture, reflecting mm. on what the word says, God's word mm. says, that we may be encouraged and strengthened. And mm. after that, we're going to go straight into the message. So let's get into that together and let's be expectant for all that God wants to say. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. Psalms 95, verses 6 to 7. Well, good morning, church. Welcome as we gather this morning to worship, to celebrate, and to be renewed in our faith and our hope and our love. For those of you joining us online, it's so good to have you with us. We are a, a community of hope. We, we believe that we've been called uh, to be a people of hope in the midst of all that's happening around us, where, where so many lives are being, being wrecked and, and just being pulled apart by, by the anxiety and the fears and, and everything that's happening in life. And, and in the midst of that, we just want to, to let you know that because God still reigns in heaven, he still holds your life as he holds ours, that no matter where you find yourself, God is still working for you, even if it doesn't make sense right now, to bring all things to your good um, and for his glory. So welcome. It's good to have you with us. So good on the spring to come together as we celebrate. As Lewis said, uh, we are now in our home, and so I am looking forward to, uh, to doing Q&A again. Uh, if you've got your questions, you can post them there. I have to say that sitting in my office, like... And of two minds at the moment, because for the last nine weeks, we've um, spent a lot more time together because I haven't had an office. And so we've sat there, we've done so much. And now I've got my space again. And I may be feeling relaxed, but Anne, well, I have to. <laughs> so there we go. Hey, uh, thank you so much, team. Um, I'm going to invite you back shortly. Um, so if you don't go far, that would be great. We are doing things a bit different this morning. This is week four of our series, Becoming, uh, Learning to Live Like Jesus, where we've just been uh, slowing down a little and saying, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Not what does it mean in terms of detail of activity or things like that, but, but what does it mean to become like Jesus? What does it mean to, to reflect the faith and the hope and the love that we carry as the embodiment of Christ? Because the Bible says that the moment we become Christians, it's no longer we that live, but Christ who lives in us. He says that we become dead to ourselves and alive to him. And therefore, I think it's really good that and really important, if not just as a church, but as individuals, to regularly just step back out of the busyness of life and examine our lives to ask ourselves, you know, are we growing in our faith and our hope and our love. Paul writes, for example, next slide, he says, um, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. In other words, the assumption is that it's possible to go through the motions, to attend church and to believe, and yet your faith isn't genuine. He says, test yourself. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. In other words, he's saying regularly step back and pause and examine your life. Ask yourself, is what we believe aligned with scripture? Is how you uh, um, live your life aligned with the way that Jesus lived his life? Are you reflecting Jesus? Are you growing in your faith and your hope and your love? Are you more alive in him than you've ever been? Are you, are you reflecting him? Are you thriving? Are you growing? And so over the last few weeks, we've been just unpacking and just looking at uh, what it means to be a disciple. And we've been asking this simple question every week. Who am I becoming? You see, it's who we're becoming is more important than what we do, where we live, what we have. Who we're becoming is, the Bible says, more important than, than all these other things because all these other things flow out of who you're becoming. And so we're asking, who am I becoming? Am I becoming more like Jesus? Am I becoming more like him? Because to be a follower of Christ is not simply to add Jesus into your life. It's not like when I became a Christian, then I fit Jesus into my routines, into my thought patterns, beliefs, structures, and everything else. And now I know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. That's not what following Jesus is about. It's not adding Jesus into your life. To be a Christian is to learn to live like Jesus. In 1 John, we read, those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. This is how we know know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. 
You see, we don't add our life to Jesus. When we become Christians, we're born again so that we now live his life. He died as we so that we could live as he. And so we're just doing this series, asking this question, you know, am I becoming more like Jesus? Am I becoming more like him? Am I letting go of things that got in the way? Am I seeing change, not just uh, spiritual growth, but am I reflecting that in the way I behave, in the way that I talk, in the way that my life goes? And of course, it begs the question, if the goal is to become more like Jesus, if the goal of following Jesus, of being a disciple, is to reflect him um, and live your lives as he did, how do we know whether we're becoming like Jesus? You know, how do we know? I don't know about you, but, you know, I'm a metrics person. And so if you give me a metric, I'll meet it. Tell me you want something done and give me no, nothing else. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to thrive. But if you give me a metric, I'll, I'll achieve it. And so what's the metric? How do we know whether we are becoming like Jesus? Well, in John chapter 13, this is just before Jesus goes to the cross. Look at what he says. I'm now giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I've loved you, you must love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You see, Discipleship, being a follower of Jesus, is defined by love. It's not defined by how much you understand, how much you know. It's not defined by where you park your car on Sunday morning. It's not defined by how often you turn, you, you go to church or, or defined by your morals or anything else. The, the world will know by the way you love. By the way you love. Now, let's just put this in context. For the last three years, Jesus has been with his disciples. You know, his life has been on display. And, and through his life being on display, what he's done is he's shown what love looks like. Everywhere he's gone, he, he's shown the disciples what love sounds like, what love looks like, how love acts, how love talks, how love serves, how love gives, how love sacrifices. For three years, Jesus has shown everybody what love is, and it's been on display so that they can understand. And now here he is. <clears throat> He's gathered in the upper room with his disciples. The last meal that he's going to share with them. It's his very last moment with them. And he's explained why he's willing to die for the world and, and why he's willing to die for them. And he says, as a consequence, I, go back. And he says, that's why I want you to, to love each other. And the way you love will define how people understand me and my mission. They'll know that you're a follower of mine by the way that you do this. And then look how Peter responds. Simon Peter says, Lord, where are you going? And I, I don't know about you, but every time I read that, I'm going like, really? Like, have you not been listening? Like it's a real slap in the face. Here's Jesus been explaining why he's giving himself for the world and for them. He's been sh showing them for three years what love is and, and what it means and, and how it's going to revolutionize the then known world and how it's going to draw you and I to him on a day like today. And Peter just says, Lord, where are you going? It, it's like he just doesn't, it's not it's like he doesn't get it so much. I think that he interrupts Jesus with this thought, yeah, 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 we, we get the love thing. You've been on it for about three years. We know that. We get it. We understand it. Now tell us something we don't know. Tell us something new. Tell us something deeper. We want deep teaching, Lord. This is our last opportunity. We want more. And I say that because I think so often. Isn't that how we treat the love of God? Like we're so familiar with it. Like we already get it. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Now teach me something I don't know. Open up the scriptures on Sunday and show me something I've never seen before. Tell me something that I've never grasped. Help me go from strength to strength. Fill me with understanding and wisdom. And all the time we're forgetting that that's not what the kingdom of heaven is about. You know, it's because we're seeking, like Peter, to, for more knowledge, for more understanding, for something deeper, that people leave churches, where people give up on, on their faith because they've failed to recognize that the kingdom of heaven is about love being manifest, and everything flows out of that. That's why we've been asking the question, who am I becoming? And Jesus helps us understand that if you want to know whether you're becoming like Jesus, is your response reflective of love? Is it flowing out of a heart of love or is it flowing out of something else? You see, in 1 Corinthians 8, Paul says, what knowledge makes us feel important 
It's love that strengthens the church. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. You see, you can, know, you can love God and you can, you can know lots of things about him and you can understand the scriptures and you, and you can be wise and everything else. But with, unless it all flows from love, he said, all it's doing is making you proud. Your knowledge, your understanding, your depth of, of, and, and grasp of scripture and everything else without love, he said, it's just making you proud. He said, the foundation that your life needs to be built on is, is love. Unless you're, the foundation of your life is the love of God and the love of God for you, then everything else is in vain. You're not becoming more like Jesus. You see, so many people in church today, in my experience, they know the love of God conceptually, but they haven't experienced it here. They know it in their mind, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But they haven't experienced it here. And so therefore they pursue knowledge, they pursue understanding, they pursue all these things, which I'm not saying are bad things, but I'm saying that the foundation has to be from, an, from love, from an experience, from an understanding. Because love strengthens faith, love strengthens others, love builds the church, whereas knowledge just makes us proud, it makes us arrogant, and it causes our, our downfall. You see, that's why so often so many people's um, faith is characterised by by um, Sunday, by what they know. It's not reflective of a lifestyle that's been shaped by the heart of God. And Galatians, Paul says, as a consequence, they say, so let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Not what you know, not the, not the Bible in terms of deeper understanding and being able to uh, get the nuance of this Greek verb and that one and everything else. But he said, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. And if the Holy Spirit's guiding your life, he's gonna produce fruit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, etc. But notice the fruit that he produces. Love. Not understanding, not knowledge. All of these things flow from love. And that's why when Peter interrupts, it's a, it's a real slap in the face. It's a real discordant, jarring note because Jesus has been saying that I'm going, I'm going to the Father so that I can empower you through the, the Holy Spirit, uh, having, rose, uh, having been raised from the dead, which will come to free you from the power of sin so that you can love, out of which all else flows. And the reason I do that is because I think that that we've forgotten that love, how we love, is the evidence of God's grace at work in our lives. That love is the evidence of, of what's happening in our lives. It doesn't matter how much knowledge, how much wisdom, um, and all those things we have. It's, it's all about love. In fact, this is why Paul writes in um, the opening verses of that great love chapter in 1 Corinthians, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't have love, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. And then he goes on. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. You see, if you want to know whether you are becoming more like Jesus, it's not about how much you know. It's not about being filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues and prophesying and healing. These are good things. I'm not saying we shouldn't desire them. But they all flow out of a heart that's filled with the love of God, a heart that has been gripped with the passion of Jesus for us that led him to the cross and through that has freed us so that we can be his body. That's what I'm saying. If you want to measure how you're becoming, Ask yourself, am I more loving? Does love shape grace? Does it influence the way that I engage with people? Does it shape the way that I see the world? Does it shape my interactions and everything else? Is everything flowing out of love? Or is it flowing out of something in here? Is it flowing out of, of something else? You see, without love, we're nothing. Without, we can have the wisdom, we can have influence, uh, we can have all sorts of things. But without love, our lives are nothing, he says. Why? Well, in 1 John, we read that God is love. That's why Paul says you can, you can have the things of heaven, but without love you've got nothing because God is love. Not God has the capacity to love, not, God, not that God has love, but God 
is love. Everything flows out of that. That means to look to God is to look to love. To follow God is to follow love. It means that to become like Jesus is to become the embodiment of love. That's why looking back at the end of his life, long after nearly all the other um, disciples had had departed this world, in fact, he's the last one, and people are saying, John, remind us of who Jesus is, remind us of the stories. You've got to start writing them down because you're the last eyewitness, we're forgetting them. And he's looking back over his life, what do I need to get through to people, to the next generation of disciples who who are expanding the church, who are taking it into the things that God has for it. And he's beginning to very carefully just think, what do they need to focus on? What do they need to be reminded of? What do they need to know? What do you at home need to know? And 1 John 3, 16, he says, we know that what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. That's what real love is. So as a consequence, he says, we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. In other words, how Jesus loved, that's how I want you to love. How Jesus loved us was to sacrifice, so therefore I want you to sacrifice for others. Jesus gave up everything for us, now you give up your claims to, to, to rights in the service of others because of your love for God because of your love for others. There's so much more that we could, we could unpack about this. We're not going to this morning. There's so many things we could say to what does love look like? How does it play out? But we're not this morning. Because as I, as I said, you know, I think so many people, they, they, they have a, a knowledge of God. They, they love God here, but they haven't experienced it here. Or their first love has grown cold and, and they've become discouraged and they have, it's almost like going through the motions because they've put themselves on the line for others and it hasn't been honoured. You know, you think back to when you were dating for some of you and, and you, took, you took that step of faith and you, you put it on the line and the other person didn't reciprocate in the same way. And that, that rebuff, how it, like you closed down a little and you felt vulnerable and, and now so I'm not going to be like that again. And I think so many of us in our faith are like that. God doesn't come through. People say things. We don't experience what we thought we would. Our prayers aren't answered in the way we'd anticipated and our love begins to, to be pulled back. And so what I want to do this morning, because if love is the main, is, is, is the main um, metric, if that's how people are going to know that we are a follower, not by how we prophesy, not by how we, the wisdom we have, and, and not by all those things, but by the way we love, then I just want to spend the rest of our time this morning in worship to reconnect in love. Because I just think there is no other greater way. There are other ways, but for me, no greater way to connect with God than in worship. And if you ever see me in worship, you'll see that very, very seldom do I sing. I'm just not a singer. I'm just not a singer. I do sing sometimes, but I'm, I'm worshiping, and I'm not using my mouth to worship in that way. I'm worshiping in other ways. And I'm, I'm praying, I'm, to, I'm communing with God. Sometimes I sing. But my point is this, worship is not just uh, singing some songs. It's a posture, it's an act. And we want to do that because For some of you, perhaps you've never experienced God's love here. You know it here, but you've heard people talk about love and you've never experienced it here. You've never had that that sense, I am profoundly loved. I know that I am, but I, I don't feel, I've never felt it. And it's my prayer and hope that you will today, that you'll feel it, not just know it, but you but you'll feel it. Or or maybe you're at home and, and you're watching and you say, but you know, God could never love me like you you love him because my life. You don't know my life. And let me just tell you, when I first became a Christian over 30 something years ago, there was a song that was being popularized in New Zealand by a guy called Steve Aparana, who, and I think it was a Bill Gaither song from way back in the day, but it went like this. Something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life. You see, that song is about love. It's not about what you know, what you have to offer. It's not about any of those sorts of things. It's about a heart that's turned to God because of his love. And in that very act, you begin to experience something. It drops from here to there. Or or maybe some of you, 
you need to be renewed in your love because of the hurts, the disappointments, the frustrations. People have walked on you, people have rebuffed you, people have not responded the way that love calls us to respond to one another. And you're just pulling back and you say, you know what, I'm going to guard my heart. I'm, I'm not going to let it be walked on again. I'm not going to let it, it be exposed in that way again. I want to encourage you as we worship to let the Spirit of God begin to revive that fire because, you know what, as much as it may have hurt, as much as it may have cost you something, people need your love. Your, the people that hurt you need you to love them because in 1 Peter, we remember we talked in this series we talked about this, how important of, uh, how, how most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. Why? Because love covers a multitude of sins. When we love others, it covers sin. It doesn't forgive them their sin. It allows the, them to come into that place where they can experience forgiveness because they know that they're loved. I mean, so I want you to, to soften your heart afresh this morning, to let the Spirit of God begin to reconnect you with, with, the, with the, the source of love that we might leave here overflowing with something we, we lacked or didn't have as much of when we came in. Because the world needs to know who Jesus is. And he says they're going to know it by looking at your life and mine and seeing how we interact, how we respond out of love. Not with what we know, not with what we prophesy, not with what we pray, but out of a heart that is filled with love out of which all else flows. So we're just going to spend some time in worship. Uh, if you want prayer and just, you know, there's a, the power and a prayer of agreement, just feel free to come to the front and we'd just, be, someone would just love to pray with you. But... If we're going to become like Jesus, then it's got to stop at some point being an intellectual thing and start becoming an experiential thing as well. We need them both. Thank you so much, Pastor Hamish, for that encouraging encouraging word for us today and just for all of us to be expectant and just think about all that has been said and help us just to draw closer to God. Mm. And so I encourage you with that. I encourage you in this time to take responsibility in all that you do. And hey, let's be excited for all that is ahead. You know, God is moving in a generation and he's moving in us and he wants to move with us. So I just pray for all of us that we can just com completely surrender and draw closer to him. Mm. So let's be excited and expectant as we go into this week ahead. But hey, as we finish, I encourage you, Keep an eye on our YouTube channel. Be encouraged with all the old videos you can find, old and new. Yes. Um, but as we finish today, Hannah's just going to finish with prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you once again for this opportunity to gather online. Even though we are all spread out and um, across the globe, we thank you that we can be united in you, that we can come together as a church family and, and just glorify your name. So, Lord, we just thank you for um, yeah today coming together and listening to your word, listening to what you have to say through Pastor Hamish. We ask that as we go about the rest of the week that we will just um, yeah, represent you uh, the best we can and live boldly uh, in the calling that you have placed over everyone's lives. So we ask that you have your way and you do what only you can do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We'll have an incredible week and we look forward to seeing you very shortly.